Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sammy and I will be the WebEx producer for today's event. We have a few housekeeping items before we get started. If you experience technical difficulties joining the WebEx session, please dial 1-866-779-3239 or you can message me using the Q&A panel. Please note, as an attendee, you are part of a larger audience. However, due to privacy rights, we have chosen not to display the number of attendees to everyone on the call. During the presentation, all participants will remain in listen-only mode, and as a reminder, this event is being recorded for rebroadcast. We encourage you to submit written questions at any time during the presentation using the Q&A panel located at the bottom right of your screen. After typing your questions in the space at the bottom, hit the Send button, and please be sure to direct your questions to all panelists in the Ask menu. Your questions will not be seen by other members of the audience and will be addressed at the end of the session. Now I am pleased to turn the call over to your host today, Don Dan Bongiovanni, Client Solutions Executive, MicroStrategies. Dan, please go ahead. Hi, welcome everybody. This is Dan Bongiovanni. I'm a Client Solutions Architect at MicroStrategies. Uh, thank you for joining the call. We're uh, going to be presenting IBM Spectra Spectrum Storage today, which is part of IBM's software-defined storage portfolio. Chris Sal, our portfolio marketing manager, the portfolio marketing manager at IBM, um, will be presenting um, IBM Spectrum Storage today. Uh, before we get started with Chris's presentation, I'd just like to spend a few minutes um, going over or highlighting uh, micro, what MicroStrategies does and our value to um, our customers. MicroStrategies is a, an IBM uh, business partner focusing on uh, many different areas uh, of IT expertise, which we'll review in a moment. Uh, we were established in 1983. We have two primary offices in northern New Jersey, Parsippany, New Jersey specifically, and in the uh, Delaware Valley area is covered by our Malvern PA office. We have uh, two interconnected uh, business partner innovation centers where we highlight all of IBM as well as other vendors' technology. The company is about 140 employees and we uh, are very, very proud of the fact that uh, we're a very technical organization. Uh, a large percentage of, of the organization consists of system analysts, programmers, and, and key people in helping our customers develop their IT strategies. Um, Move, moving ahead, um, some of the solution practice areas where we specialize are infrastructure solutions, where we provide hardware, software, storage, and networking for our customers. We provide uh, cloud solutions, consulting, and implementations. Uh, big data and business analytics is a practice where we help our customers uh, get more out of the, their data and help them manage that data more effectively. Um, security and uh, mobility, uh, we provide tools to secure your infrastructure and manage um, your security environment. We uh, have a large practice in enterprise content management where we provide um, document processing and integration of uh, technology from disparate content repositories. We also provide our customers with social media and corporate communications um, and collaboration uh, expertise. We provide services in business process management, design and development, implementation and support, and staffing solutions through our Resource One organization. We also provide managed support services 24 by 7. Our innovation centers located in Malvern and 
Pennsylvania and Parsippany, New Jersey, uh, host IBM's hardware and software systems, allowing our customers to be educated on these systems, have hand, get hands-on experience on the systems either prior to making a, a, a hardware or software purchase decision or ongoing training um, and develop skill, skills development um, after the uh, system implementation. We, we provide uh, both hardware and software solutions and show how they work IBM's hardware and software work together to create those solutions. These innovation centers are available to all our customers and, and um, prospective customers. Um, and that was all I, I wanted to say about microstrategies. Now we're going to have Chris uh, talk about spectrum storage and, uh, you know, the value that it provides to our customers. Uh, great, thanks, Dan, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Stahl, as Dan said. I am the Portfolio Marketing Manager for Software Defined Storage uh, at IBM. So uh, let's go straight into it, and let's start by taking a look at some of the changes that are occurring uh, both in business and also to do with data uh, that are really bringing us here and that are prompting people uh, to have uh, this conversation. As you know, there are more and more pressures on businesses to be more responsive in a very demanding competitive environment. This can mean uh, things like uh, bringing new applications out more quickly uh, than we have done traditionally uh, to respond to more demands uh, from customers and also uh, just to be more competitive uh, within the marketplace uh, as we serve customers. A lot of these new applications are being driven uh, by growth in the amount of data that we're storing. And this growth in data uh, comes from a number of uh, sources. I'm, I'm sure you've heard people present about it previously, so I won't uh, dwell on it too much. Uh, but the data growth comes from things like new sources of data, uh, and it comes from um, – uh, in many cases, it also comes from legislative requirements uh, that we keep more data and for more time than we've done in the past. And the emergence of technologies such as uh, analytics uh, means that there is the opportunity, you know, to take this additional data that we're storing and really feed it back and address uh, some of the business pressures to be more competitive by analyzing the data and, you know, finding those nuggets of information that can help us be more competitive uh, that perhaps are hidden uh, within this volume of data. So one of the thoughts that people often have is, well, maybe I don't need to store all that much data. Um, you know, that really isn't an option uh, for most companies because either storing the data is being mandated legislatively, as I said, or uh, that data is an untapped resource uh, for making your business more competitive. So just saying, well, we're not going to store that data um, isn't, isn't really an option. Finally, uh, businesses are also struggling with saying, well, what are we going to do about cloud? That uh, uh, many businesses are wanting to use clouds to uh, cooperate uh, with other businesses that perhaps they're working with. Uh, and, of course, uh, many people are looking at cloud uh, as a way of reducing costs uh, for addressing this growth in data. Uh, so the challenge is how to integrate using cloud storage uh, or cloud computing for that matter uh, with uh, on-premises infrastructure that you've traditionally had. And so what we're trying to do then is say, well, a lot of the problems that, uh, that arise from these uh, pressures are to do with aligning data with hardware. And that we're, what, what we're aiming to do is to try and, if you like, free data uh, from the constraints of hardware that we've had in the past. Now, if we look at some of the business requirements and how they challenge traditional approaches to deploying storage, uh, we can see, and I guess this is not, again, it's not really going to be new news, uh, that the sort of challenges uh, that we're faced with are things like uh, controlling costs, controlling complexity, and traditional storage infrastructures that can be quite inflexible. Traditional approaches to deploying storage have included things like, you know, we need to store more data, so we'll just buy more storage capacity. 
Uh, often, uh, what we're doing there is really just prolonging a problem that we already have, that uh, storage capacity uh, is, is often not very well used. People frequently speak about storage capacity being 50% or less uh, utilized. So simply adding capacity and not you know, doing anything else differently uh, really means you're buying twice as much capacity as you really need, which obviously uh, is, uh, is not a great way to control costs. As we think about complexity, uh, what we've often done is uh, when we add new storage systems, that we've dedicated storage to particular applications or particular servers. Uh, so you might have a particular storage system that is dedicated to Oracle, and then perhaps another storage system which is being used with an exchange system. And um, you, know, you can um, spread this out to any number of applications. This is done uh, because you know, if you dedicate the storage to a particular application, it makes management easier. There's sort of like no question about, you know, one thing stepping on another or how we how we um, using the storage. On the flip side, uh, what it means is that uh, this, with analytics applications where you might want to analyze data across multiple uh, applications, it now becomes much more difficult to do that because that data is isolated for a particular application in a particular storage system. It also means that if you have spare capacity uh, in one storage system that could be used for an application or perhaps with a new application, uh, if that storage is dedicated to a particular server or to a particular application, uh, that spare storage capacity might well go unused. So this is one reason uh, why we see uh, commonly uh, such uh, low storage utilization. And of course, the, the next, the, we can make that even worse by when we have people working at multiple locations or when we are in fact trying to share data among different applications, we end up duplicating data, which uses more capacity for these additional co copies that we're making, uh, and potentially you know, is simply prolonging the problem of having individual separated silos of data. Because in the past, it's been difficult to replace storage hardware with, uh, without disrupting applications, and as we have more and more applications on virtualized servers, it makes it even harder to replace uh, st storage hardware. And so what we've seen is that people have tended to extend refresh cycles for storage hardware simply to put off the pain of changing out the hardware. As a result, you're using older hardware that doesn't have the advantages of newer equipment, uh, and so again, driving up costs uh, and potentially also uh, driving up, uh, <coughs> maintaining, I'm sorry, maintaining poor utilization of storage because you're not using the latest capabilities. Finally, as people look to try and deploy cloud, uh, one of the concerns there is that cloud simply becomes yet another silo within the data center. So it gets treated you know, kind of like uh, another storage system will put some data in it, um, but it's separate from everything else. So in fact, uh, whereas cloud is intended to make things better, uh, with an ad hoc deployment of this nature where we just sort of throw cloud into the mix, uh, cloud can actually make some of these challenges, particularly uh, cost and inflexibility, it potentially can actually make them worse by simply adding another silo, another area of uh, sort of isolated uh, data uh, that you need to consider separately. So today's conversation is about software-defined storage and how software-defined storage can help us uh, with some of these challenges. So it might be helpful if we start by saying, well, what exactly is software-defined storage? Uh, now, this is a diagram from IDC, and IDC shows that uh, software-defined storage is part of a software-defined data center, of course. And they see an evolution of data centers, starting with uh, software-defined compute, uh, or as most of us know that, uh, really server virtualization capability. Uh, so many clients, in fact, probably at this point most clients, uh, have already deployed uh, some form of software-defined compute, uh, typically uh, using technologies such as uh, VMware, uh, IBM's PowerVM, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, and so forth. And so vir server virtualization at this point is fairly mature, fairly well understood, and as I said, deployed by you know, the vast majority of customers to some degree at this point. In IDC's evolution, uh, the next stage then would be software-defined storage, uh, which starts with, but uh, isn't limited to, 
uh, storage virtualization. And we'll take a look at the characteristics uh, of what we're talking about uh, with software-defined storage in this presentation today. And then the next stage is in the evolution will be software-defined networking and ultimately software-defined facilities. And uh, today, uh, we won't be talking about uh, those additional steps. So we're focused today on software-defined storage. Now, as I said, software-defined storage includes, but is not limited to, uh, storage virtualization. And this is a definition from IDC of what software-defined storage is. Now, I should say there are uh, multiple definitions of software-defined storage uh, from different analysts and from different viewpoints. Uh, this is one. Uh, and basically what IDC is saying is that software-defined storage is um, the, the, the software uh, that provides a full suite of storage services and provides federation uh, uh, between the placement of data and enables mobility of uh, data, essentially, between storage resources. Uh, to put that another way, what we're really saying is that software-defined storage is the software that provides the capability that you're accustomed to for storing data. So traditionally, uh, you have been accustomed to storage capability being deployed, being enabled in a box. And if you look at most storage systems today, um, IBM Storewise, for example, IBM XIV, uh, they're all software-based. And uh, that's really the key here, that it's the software capability that today uh, is being deployed inside a dedicated storage system. And what we're, what we're really talking about is freeing that software capability from that dedicated storage system, making it more flexible, giving you more options for deploying it, uh, so that it can better match your business requirements. Now, some people uh, would say, and IDC does, but not everybody uh, takes this viewpoint, uh, that a definition of software-defined storage has to include the ability to run on commodity hardware. That's, uh, not everybody takes that view, and in fact, um, IBM doesn't really take that view. We take the view that uh, there are options for how you might deploy uh, software-defined storage, and that can include uh, being deployed on commodity hardware. It can include uh, being deployed in the cloud, but it also can include traditional deployment models uh, like uh, XIV, where you have a dedicated uh, hardware system, but where all of the substantial functionality is being delivered by software. And we'll see that as we go through the presentation today. So IBM's approach then is to encourage, if you like, unboxing uh, capability from traditional storage devices. And some of the types of capability uh, that we're deploying with our software-defined storage solution is improving agility for the enterprise uh, with a self-tuning enterprise-class storage solution that allows you to deploy storage infrastructure for clouds or for other purposes uh, in minutes compared to uh, weeks or even months that might be involved in a traditional acquisition cycle. Providing control of your storage infrastructure with insight into an optimization of both on-premise and cloud storage uh, using sophisticated analytics uh, to select the best placement for data within that infrastructure. And finally, improving efficiency uh, for the storage environment with things like automated data placement and management uh, across different storage systems, different media, different cloud, and, and even different locations uh, to meet both service levels and also to reduce cost. And we'll take a look at some of those as well as we go through the presentation. Looking at those three capabilities, IBM's Spectrum Storage family of software-defined storage solutions uh, consists of six offerings that address uh, these uh, three requirements for agility, for better control, and for improving efficiency within the data center. And IBM is committed to making a more than $1 billion investment over the next five years in this category of software, specifically in software-defined storage. And what we're doing is we're going to be delivering the software capability either as software to install on servers uh, of your choice or as a cloud-based service or as a dedicated appliance where the software comes pre-installed in a system that's ready to run. And so we'll take a look at some of those deployment models as well as we go through the presentation today. 
So the six offerings uh, within the Spectrum Storage family uh, help us, as I said, uh, really remove dysfunctional capability from traditional boxes and give us new deployment models with new flexibility uh, so that we really can exploit our data and use data more efficiently uh, within the data center. Specifically, IBM Spectrum Control provides analytics-driven data management that can help reduce costs by as much as 50%. Uh, IBM Spectrum Control is based on technology uh, from IBM's Virtual Storage Center. IBM Spectrum Protect, which is based on Tivoli Storage Manager technology, uh, can optimize data protection and reduce costs for backup by as much as 38%. IBM Spectrum Archive is based on technology from our Linear Tape file system, and it provides rapid uh, access to long-term retention data that can reduce the cost of ownership for keeping archived data by up to 90% uh, compared to using an old disk solution. IBM Spectrum Virtualize is the software that powers fan volume controller and also the StoreWise family of systems. And as you know, it provides uh, storage virtualization capability uh, for mixed storage environments and with real-time compression enables you to store up to five times as much data in the same storage space. IBM Spectrum Accelerate is based on the software that previously was delivered in the IBM XIV storage system. And as I said, it helps us uh, deliver enterprise class storage, uh, typically for clouds, in minutes instead of the months it can typically take uh, to acquire new storage systems. And finally, IBM Spectrum Scale, uh, formerly IBM Elastic Storage, provides high performance and highly scalable storage for unstructured data, uh, spanning, uh, potentially spanning multiple locations, uh, even around the world. Now, the sort of business value that Spectrum Storage is going to be delivering includes simplified storage management by using a consistent set of storage management and data protection tools across all applications, all data types, whatever type of storage is being used, and wherever that data is being stored. It provides very high scalability with data potentially being stored anywhere. So bringing together silos of uh, different types of data uh, across borders, uh, across locations, including uh, on-premises storage and cloud storage being used together in an integrated manner and automatically moving data among locations and moving data between tiers, uh, both to optimize cost and also to improve performance. Software allows us to leverage commodity hardware. So uh, if, it, if it's the solution that best meets your requirements, uh, then using commodity hardware uh, to help reduce costs. And as I said, moving data to the right location, to the right tier at the right time, including flash, disk, tape, and even cloud to optimize costs. And finally, the solution is based on open industry standards, including uh, technologies such as OpenStack and Hadoop, uh, so that you can include uh, traditional IBM storage, non-IBM storage, and also, of course, software uh, from other companies as well into your uh, complete deployment. Now, of course, IBM is not the only company uh, talking about software-defined storage. Uh, so you might be asking yourself, well, you know, what, what's special about IBM in this regard? Firstly, IBM has a long history understanding software and storage, and that IBM research has uh, driven a lot of the core storage technologies that both we're talking about uh, within Spectrum Storage and also that other companies are now using as well in the, in the, in the storage realm. Uh, so we have a unique expertise uh, in bringing together software functionality and storage requirements. IBM has an extensive portfolio of uh, data-centric software, including information management, content management, uh, analytics, uh, databases, and archive capabilities. So we deeply understand the requirements of data uh, and not just the requirements of storage. IBM is a leading provider of cloud uh, storage and other cloud capabilities. And so when it comes to integrating together on-premises capability, whether it's in traditional hardware or in new software solutions, uh, with cloud capability, 
Uh, IBM is in a unique position uh, to be able to bring those different types of storage together into a single solution. And finally, IBM software-defined storage with uh, Spectrum Storage is intended to embrace the infrastructure that you already have as part of the solution. And over time, as you migrate from perhaps a traditional infrastructure to a new software-defined infrastructure, Spectrum Storage is intended to help you do that. And it's uh, our, our experience with infrastructure, uh, our years of working with clients such as yourselves in deploying that infrastructure that really enables us to embrace what you already have uh, and to enable us to transition from what you already have uh, to a software-defined infrastructure uh, with greater efficiency and with more flexibility in the future. Now, I mentioned that uh, some of the uh, Spectrum storage offerings are based on existing technologies. And with the announcement of Spectrum storage that we made in February, uh, we did announce new capabilities as well. So let me very briefly uh, highlight some of the new capabilities, and then we'll take just a little closer look uh, at each of the offerings within the Spectrum storage uh, portfolio. So firstly, we announced IBM Spectrum Accelerate, which is based on the proven uh, grid technology in the, IB, in the IBM XIV storage system. Uh, now, this system is now deployed, connected to over 100,000 uh, servers worldwide. And the idea is that by leveraging uh, existing servers that you may have and be enabling you to reuse those servers in many cases, uh, that we can deploy enterprise class storage uh, in minutes simply by deploying new software uh, on servers that you may already have. Spectrum Accelerate inherits all the strengths of the IBM XIV system, including capabilities like self-tuning uh, with very low management overhead. So it becomes very straightforward to use Spectrum Accelerate in just the same way uh, that it's very straightforward to use the XIV system. Spectrum Accelerate software can be deployed on-premise on your own servers, or it can be deployed in an IBM software cloud uh, using virtual machines uh, within a software cloud. Uh, so in this way, you could have a very low-cost deployment of Spectrum Accelerate. Uh, Spectrum Accelerate uh, on-premise or in the cloud uh, can communicate with each other, uh, for example, for remote mirroring purposes. Uh, so one option uh, would be to, to use Spectrum Accelerate uh, on-premise uh, for, um, for, for your normal day-to-day -day usage and use Spectrum Accelerate running in the cloud to provide a DR capability uh, that then would be available uh, to any data center anywhere in the world uh, should you need it for recovery. And Spectrum Accelerate and IBM XIV systems uh, can inter interoperate and can communicate together in this way as well. So you could use Spectrum Accelerate as a complement uh, to an existing IBM XI XIV deployment as another option. We're also announcing uh, a, an open beta program uh, for Spectrum Control Storage Insights. Uh, and what Storage Insights does is it provides analytic data and storage management from the cloud. So whereas with traditional management tools, uh, you would be faced with installing uh, a whole bunch of software uh, in your data centers uh, to get insight and to get control of your resources. With Spectrum Control Storage Insights, uh, there's a very small piece of software that needs to be installed within the data center, but all the heavy lifting is done in the cloud. And so using Storage Insights, uh, you can get a lot of information, you can get a lot of control of both your traditional storage resources and also new software-defined resources. And it enables you to start working and start getting that information very, very rapidly. You can see, you know, when I was speaking about Spectrum Accelerate and now Storage Insights, we're talking about uh, being able to respond and make changes very, very quickly. And uh, so Spectrum Accelerate does that for storing data, Storage Insights, uh, can do that for understanding your use of storage and understanding your data. We're also announcing a, an alpha preview uh, of our new multi-cloud storage gateway technology, which provides seamless data movement to and from cloud. So it really enables you, uh, for the first time, uh, to think of cloud storage as being simply another tier of storage uh, which is available to you and which 
um, you know, software that is managing your data can exploit, uh, you know, for tiering, uh, for reducing cost, uh, and for placing data in the right place. Uh, so we'll take a little closer look at uh, both of these uh, as we uh, go through looking at the, uh, the Spectrum storage offerings. But as you saw on the previous slide, there's basically a family of six uh, offerings uh, plus the new multi-cloud storage gateway support. Uh, so let's take a closer look uh, at these, uh, these offerings. IBM Spectrum Control, uh, as I said, is, uh, is all about getting insight and understanding um, your data and your storage, and is based on technologies uh, from IBM uh, Virtual Storage Center. What Spectrum Control does is it help, it's going to help you transition to new workloads, to updated storage infrastructures, to get a better grasp of your existing use of storage, and then through its advanced analytics, uh, provide you with recommendations, in fact, even act on those recommendations, uh, to make better use of tiers of storage within uh, your data center, including uh, the use of cloud storage as well. So uh, among the benefits that Spectrum Control delivers is this, uh, this ability to have volume level, cross-platform automated storage tiering, which can reduce cost of storage by as much as 50%. By using a service catalog coupled with automated provisioning, uh, to make the best use of pools of storage, whether it's in cloud, software-defined storage, or traditional storage systems. And by using, uh, again, its advanced analytics, uh, providing intelligent performance management, enabling you to get views of the use of storage, and views of the performance that's being delivered, uh, both at an application level and also at a department level. So you can see uh, which departments are using storage, what performance they're getting, or alternatively, uh, you can see which applications are doing those things. Uh, so it gives you different views of the same information uh, to match how you want uh, to be able to access that information. As I said, Spectrum Control Storage Insights is uh, an open beta. Uh, you can sign up for this beta at the URL that's, uh, that's on this slide. Uh, but what Storage Insights is all about is really providing the same capabilities that I just described uh, for Spectrum Control, but providing those capabilities as a cloud-based service. Uh, so it provides you with the same sort of insights into usage. It provides you uh, with the same sort of insights into performance. It provides you with control capabilities. And it provides you with automation uh, to move data around, to eliminate wasted space, to make the best use of the tiers of storage that you already have, and to make recommendations for tiers of storage in the future. So all the sorts of capabilities you've come to expect uh, from a storage, a storage and data management solution like Spectrum Control, uh, but without the need to install a storage and data management solution within your data center. So being delivered as a service uh, from the cloud. As I said, this is, uh, this is a beta that's available today. Uh, so you can uh, sign up for that. You can try it out. Uh, and then when we announce uh, storage insights later this year, uh, obviously you'll be able to transition uh, to using the full product at that time. IBM Spectrum Protect is based on IBM Tivoli Storage Manager. And so as you probably know, what Spectrum Protect is all about doing is providing complete data protection and recovery, uh, whether it's for virtual, physical, or cloud data. Uh, what Spectrum Protect does is it provides backup, snapshot, archive, recovery, space management, and even bare machine recovery, uh, coupled with data with disaster recovery capabilities as well. It provides all of these capabilities uh, within a single solution. So instead of having to buy many different products, whether it's physical or virtual or cloud, uh, without whether without needing to buy different products for backup, recovery, archive, and so forth. It's a single solution, and because of its advanced technologies like its incremental forever technology, uh, we can reduce the cost of a backup and recovery infrastructure very dramatically compared to alternative solutions. What Spectrum Protect does is it provides both application-aware and also VM-aware 
data protection for any size organization. So if you recall the IDC chart earlier, which was talking about clients starting with server virtualization and then moving to software-defined storage, you can see why this sort of capability uh, makes perfect sense. Let's move on and take a look at Spectrum Archive, which, as I said, is based on IBM linear tape file system technology. Uh, and what Spectrum Archive is all about doing is taking the, uh, taking the uh, very low cost characteristics of tape, uh, which traditionally has been hard to use because when data is on tape, and traditionally, it has to be accessed by special applications which access data on tape. For example, uh, Tivoli Storage Manager uh, will use tape as uh, an option uh, within its uh, backup hierarchy. What uh, Spectrum Archive enables us to do is to take advantage of the low cost of tape and yet access data on tape using traditional applications that, uh, you know, in the past, would have been accessing data that was being stored on disk. So Spectrum Archive combines together disk storage for high performance and tape storage for very low cost and enables you to access the data regardless of whether it's on disk or tape with traditional applications that you're accustomed to. So by combining together these two tiers of storage, uh, we can reduce costs for storing a long-time archive data by as much as 90%. And yet, when we need to access that data, uh, maybe even for analytics purposes, uh, we can bring that data back, we can get it onto disk, and we can access it with high performance as well using the capabilities of Spectrum Archive. IBM Spectrum Virtualize is, as I said, the software that powers uh, IBM SAN Volume Controller. And so what Spectrum of Virtualize is all about is providing very, very scalable storage virtualization technology that provides common network-based functionality, management, and data mobility across heterogeneous storage types. So whether the data is stored um, you know, on IBM uh, or other vendor storage, we provide common capability, so when you move data from one type of storage to another, uh, you can still use all the same procedures. You don't have to change anything. Um, and we provide that mobility across different types of storage uh, without disruption. What uh, Spectrum Virtualize does is it pools storage capacity from multiple systems. So whereas previously we were speaking about these isolated silos of data, the Spectrum Virtualize, we essentially virtually glue together uh, the storage resources that you have so that all the storage capacity is available for any application. This enables us to make much better use of storage, and it helps to avoid those, if you like, sort of islands of unused capacity. And in that way, Spectrum Virtualize can help improve storage utilization up to 100%. So we can, uh, in many cases, we can double the storage utilization that you will be seeing. And then in addition to that, through using the real-time compression capability of Spectrum Virtualize, uh, we can store as much as five times as much data in the same physical space that we were using previously. Uh, so Spectrum Virtualize and virtualizing uh, storage is a key underlying uh, capability uh, for both deploying clouds and also uh, for deploying software-defined storage environment. Spectrum Accelerate, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is the software from IBM XIV systems now available uh, with a much more flexible uh, deployment capability. Uh, so it carries, it carries forward all the familiar capabilities of XIV, such as tuning-free, consistent performance, uh, but gives you new delivery models for that, cap for that capability. Uh, like the XIV system, it delivers hotspot-free performance by automatically moving data around on the storage that's being used. Uh, it delivers great quality of service capabilities uh, without any manual uh, tuning being required. It has remote replication, as I was mentioning, which can be to a, another Spectrum Virtualize instance, uh, to an XIV system, or to Spectrum Virtualize in the cloud. Uh, and with uh, our hyperscale manager capability, uh, Spectrum, uh, Spectrum Accelerate uh, can deploy configurations up to dozens of petabytes in size. 
And Spectrum Accelerate carries forward the XIV system's leading uh, VMware and OpenStack integration capabilities as well. So one of the great things about Spectrum Accelerate is that it gives you this ability to dynamically scale the storage infrastructure. So if you think about deploying applications, maybe testing applications and, and then uh, deploying them, uh, we can help reduce the upfront capital costs for deploying an application um, uh, by being able to leverage uh, servers and storage that you already have within the infrastructure. And in fact, one a great use case uh, for using Spectrum Accelerate uh, revolves around the idea that you might be building one application uh, that has a particular mix of compute and storage requirements. Uh, and then, you know, when you're done with that application, you can redeploy the server resources that you were using, but in a different balance between uh, compute and storage needs. So with traditional deployment models, uh, you would need to buy, you know, as many servers as were needed for, you know, the most compute intense uh, application, and you would need to buy as much storage as was needed uh, for the most storage intense application. But with Spectrum Accelerate, uh, you can have a pool of servers with associated storage, and then the balance between the servers which are used for compute purposes and the servers which are used for storage purposes uh, can change from one to another, and that just depends on what software you choose to deploy on the individual servers. So a uh, tremendous improvement in the uh, type of flexibility uh, that we're delivering uh, by, using, uh, by using Spectrum Accelerate, and really a whole new way of thinking about the way that you deploy storage and how you take advantage of servers that you already have. And finally, IBM Spectrum Scale, which is based on uh, GPFS technology or elastic storage technology, is all about supporting very high performance, very large scale-out storage for files and objects. For many use cases, but many of them are associated with high-performance computing, uh, with big data, and potentially with cloud. The scalability of IBM Spectrum Scale, hence its name, uh, is, is really tremendously great, going up to uh, yottabytes of data. So uh, clients, you know, who start by deploying uh, Spectrum Scale, you know, you may be using it initially uh, for its efficiency, uh, for its ability uh, to use multiple tiers of storage, uh, perhaps for its ability to have a single namespace across multiple departments and multiple locations. Uh, but even if you're starting with those requirements, uh, you can do so with confidence uh, that the system is going to be able to scale as your business grows uh, to very, very large sizes. One of the really great things about Spectrum Scale is that it has integrated tiering built in as well based on individual files uh, within the system. And so the system has you know, automated data lifecycle management that includes Flash, uh, which can deliver six times the performance for data compared to storing it on disk with Spectrum Scale, uh, all the way to tape, uh, through a combination of Spectrum Scale and Spectrum Archive, uh, which can give, you know, 10 times savings in the cost of storing that data. And the Spectrum Scale is another great example uh, of our commitment to open standards with being POSIX compliant and with having OpenStack and Hadoop uh, interfaces as well. Now, the other new technology uh, that we announced in February uh, as an alpha preview is the multi-cloud storage gateway. Now, the, uh, the storage gateway, uh, we don't expect will be an individual product, but rather the technology uh, will be incorporated into uh, other Spectrum storage offerings, including Spectrum Virtualized and Spectrum Scale. And the idea is uh, that the multi-cloud storage gateway technology provides us with uh, an additional tier of storage, a very low cost tier of storage. Uh, that's provided by uh, public cloud or private cloud uh, storage capabilities. This is going to include IBM SoftLayer uh, and other clouds such as Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, Rackspace, and others as well. And what the storage gateway does uh, is it can be used as an additional tier for purposes like backup, disaster recovery, archive, and so forth. Uh, the gateway compresses data, so it makes better use of uh, network connections. It encrypts the data for security, so it's only accessible uh, to your organization. 
And potentially, when you store data in the cloud, the gateway can actually replicate data across two or more clouds uh, to provide you with greater peace of mind you know, if you're concerned about the availability of some of the cloud services that you might be using. So it gives a great deal of flexibility in including cloud storage as another tier uh, within the existing set of storage that you're using. So thinking back to what I was saying earlier about the unfortunate characteristics of ad hoc deployment of cloud, uh, the gateway is very much about integrating cloud as being just another tier that's being managed by technologies such as Spectrum Virtualized and Spectrum Scale. Uh, so really integrating cloud very tightly into your overall storage management picture. Uh, and some ways that you might use this, for example, uh, supporting traditional applications, making snapshots of data, perhaps for backup purposes, uh, you could simply use cloud storage as a low-cost target for those uh, snapshots. Alternatively, thinking of uh, new generation applications using uh, Spectrum Scale, uh, we could use cloud storage as an additional storage tier uh, with Spectrum Scale. So uh, just as we have, as I was mentioning earlier, just as we have uh, disk and tape and flash today, uh, we would have disk and tape and flash and also cloud storage uh, in the future. So another option uh, within a familiar management environment. Now, as I said, one of the key strengths of IBM Spectrum Storage uh, is that we embrace your existing infrastructure uh, and also uh, we, we, we deliver new storage, software-defined storage infrastructures as well. And IBM and uh, companies like MicroStrategies are going to be with you along the way uh, as we both uh, make better use and improve the efficiency and flexibility of your existing infrastructure and then also, as we start to deploy a new software-defined environment to complement uh, the existing infrastructure. Uh, so, for example, uh, a, good, a good case would be uh, what I was mentioning earlier uh, with using, uh, if you have XIV storage systems today, uh, then Spectrum Accelerate uh, can be a great complement to those storage systems. And that really brings me to, to one point I did want to mention here, uh, which is many people you know, look at software-defined storage and they say, well, that's all very well, uh, but that's some way in the future. But as you've seen through the presentation today, our software-defined storage environment, our spectrum storage environment, uh, is really based on technologies that are very familiar uh, that many of you uh, will already have installed today. And so deploying software-defined storage isn't really a matter of an upheaval and uh, changing things in the data center. It's really very much an evolutionary process from where you stand today. Uh, so, for example, you might be using SAN Volume Controller today, uh, and then the question might be, well, what's the next step? Well, depending on your business priorities, uh, the next step, for example, uh, might simply be to virtualize more storage uh, with Spectrum Virtualize. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the next step might be to deploy better management uh, and to deploy the advanced analytics uh, that are available with Spectrum Control uh, to, take better, to make better use of the tiering that Spectrum Virtualize provides. Uh, so, uh, you know, you could deploy Spectrum Control Storage Insights as a quick and easy way of making better use of the Spectrum Virtualized software that you already had within SAN Volume Controller. And then perhaps with that uh, solution in mind, you know, as you start to move forward, as you have more unstructured data being kept, uh, then potentially uh, the next move would be to start to deploy IBM Spectrum Scale. It's going to differ from one situation to another. It's going to depend where you are today, which members of the family you already have deployed today. Uh, but in any case, the move to a more fully software-defined environment using Spectrum Storage software is not a big upheaval. It doesn't mean completely replacing your data center. It means an evolutionary change uh, over time from where you are today. And the sorts of improvements uh, that people have seen through using Spectrum Storage, uh, some of those are shown on this slide here. Uh, so uh, one client, an oil and gas uh, company, saw their storage infrastructure double in size 
over a 16-month period. And obviously, they needed to be able to get that under control, you know, before uh, so that they could, you know, make changes and absorb this. And by using a combination of spectrum virtualize and spectrum control, uh, they were able uh, to maintain uh, control over their organization to improve the way they were using their storage uh, with the team uh, that they had in place. Uh, a government agency was uh, looking at refreshing data um, in, in a test development organization, which was taking them five hours previously. Uh, by switching to using IBM Spectrum Scale uh, and using uh, real-time compression with Spectrum Virtualize, uh, they were able to both uh, improve their refresh cycle time uh, from five hours to about two minutes, uh, but also through the real-time compression capability with Spectrum Virtualize, uh, they were able to reduce their storage requirements uh, by as much as 80%. And then finally, an aerospace company uh, that we're working with uh, needed to synchronize information being used by flight crews around the world. And traditionally, uh, this might have involved duplicating data, sending it to different locations, and having to have management of that duplicated data as well. But through the use of spectrum uh, scale, uh, they were able to get automated deployment of data, of the right data to the right locations, and have that data automatically refreshed from the center uh, whenever the data was updated. So they would have confidence that flight crews, wherever they were, had the most up-to-date, the most current information uh, without needing a lot of manual duplication and a lot of management of that environment. So having heard me talk about uh, IBM Spectrum Storage, uh, what's different about IBM Spectrum Storage compared to other software-defined storage environments that you might hear about? Uh, well, there's really five reasons. Uh, firstly, Spectrum Storage is not a sort of release 1.0 uh, software-defined storage solution. Spectrum Storage is built, as you've heard, using technologies that have been proven over the years in more than 50,000 client deployments worldwide. Spectrum Storage is all about giving you flexibility in how you deploy this capability, uh, whether it's on cloud as a traditional appliance like the XIV system, uh, or a software running on your choice of hardware. So it gives you a lot of different flexible deployment models uh, to match changes in your business. As I said, Spectrum Storage complements and transforms your existing infrastructure. So unlike uh, some software-defined storage deployments, which are really uh, promoting a completely new storage infrastructure, IBM Spectrum Storage embraces the infrastructure that you already have and then promotes the transformation uh, to a new, more flexible infrastructure to support next generation applications and the growing data requirements that we're seeing. Spectrum Storage is a comprehensive family of offerings. So again, unlike some uh, alternatives uh, which are focused solely on a particular part of uh, the, the software-defined storage environment, Spectrum Storage is addressing all the requirements you have for software-defined storage. So you have a complete solution uh, from a single vendor where all the parts are designed to work together and all of them have a common user interface and a common way of working. And finally, uh, IBM uh, was uh, recently ranked by IDC the number one provider of software-defined storage platforms. So we have the experience uh, both through deploying these technologies, as I said, in many client deployments, uh, but also the success uh, in deploying these technologies uh, with our clients that's recognized by our clients and then also is recognized by analysts within the industry. So in this brief presentation, what I've tried to do is give you an overview of IBM Spectrum Storage to show you the requirements that have led us to deliver it, uh, to help you understand the advantages that a software-defined uh, environment based on Spectrum Storage uh, can provide to you. Uh, and I hope I've given you an insight uh, into the benefits and uh, what's different about IBM Spectrum Storage. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, hand it back to Dan for any final remarks. 
Chris, that was great. Thank you very much. That was a, a great explanation. I want to take a moment to um, open up the lines for anyone to ask questions. Okay. So if anybody has any questions, you can pipe up now. Chris, in the meantime, I, I did have a couple of questions. Um, the multi-cloud gateway, um, you said it's not going to be an individual product. It'll be uh, functions built into storage uh, spec or spectrum virtualized and spectrum scale. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. Um, I guess a lot of people have concerns about cloud storage in the ability to access the data, you know, in, in terms of performance and stuff like that. Um, does, does the multi-cloud gateway do anything to accelerate um, the links using, used to connect the data center to the cloud? Sure. Well, uh, the, the multi-cloud, I mean, the first thing to be said, I think, uh, is, you know, kind of underlies your, your question. So, I mean, cloud storage, you know, is remote storage. You're accessing it over a network, and typically the network you'll be accessing it over is, you know, much slower uh, than, you know, say a fiber channel SAN uh, within the data center. So there are, you know, underlying characteristics that say cloud storage is inherently slower uh, than storage within the data center. And that's a reason why you would probably uh, deploy the gateway in conjunction with using um, IBM Spectrum Control uh, so that you could really identify the right data uh, to move into the cloud and uh, potentially also to move the right, that, that data back from the cloud uh, before you started to make intense use of it. Uh, having said that, yes, the, the multi-cloud uh, gateway has compression capabilities built in. So by compressing data before we send it over the network uh, into the cloud storage, we make the best use uh, of the network technology that you have available. Uh, and of course, that will help to, uh, to speed getting the data back. But I mean, there's only so much that, uh, that compression can do, but it certainly helps. Right, exactly. Okay, great. Uh, uh, availability. Um, in terms of uh, multi-cloud storage gateway, when do you anticipate that functionality will be built into the Spectrum Virtualized and Spectrum Scale? Well, we're, we're making an alpha preview right now, which says, you know, this is a technology that we're working on. Um, I think if, uh, if customers come to the IBM Edge uh, conference in Las Vegas in May, uh, you'll be able to see demonstrations of the multi-cloud uh, storage uh, gateway technology, and you'll be able to see how it works uh, with Spectrum Virtualize and with Spectrum Scale, uh, and then we will make an announcement of the technology uh, in due course. That's great. Great, Chris. Thank you very much. Well, that about wraps up um, the presentation for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, and. Uh, appreciate you taking this time to learn more about IBM software defined storage.